News Talk 1250, KBRF, listen anytime, any place with the Fergus Now app on your phone. It's now time for Chamber on the Air with the uh, president of the Fergus Falls Area Chamber of Commerce, Lisa Workman. Lisa, always fun to have you in studio. Good morning, Dave. Happy February 7th. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Yeah. You had it right. It's the 7th. It's already the 7th, and I feel like we should have been here a week ago, but that still would have been January. So, so glad everyone's tuning in. Uh, We're so lucky to have this opportunity to showcase and highlight several of our members on the first Wednesday of every month, and we've got a really great cross-section of our membership today here. Uh, We have Summit Carbon Solutions, Gate City Bank, Health Resources Center, and Hillcrest Academy, all talking about different things, but you know what? We're all related in that we're all here for the betterment of the Fergus Falls area. So appreciate their involvement in the chamber and things that are, you know, going on. Before we get started, I do want to touch on a couple things. You know, it's a chamber show. So we're going to talk about the 30th annual Battle of the Businesses Bowling Tournament. We have 60 teams, that's six zero teams, who will be competing on Saturday for King Bob and Gutter Bob. And I got to tell you, the trophies this year are amazing. Make sure you check out our Facebook page for those trophies. So I want to thank all of the those businesses and organizations who donated prizes for us to give away, as well as those who are sponsoring teams. Come on out and cheer on your favorite bowlers and non-bowlers alike. Uh, They will be dressed in their favorite Las Vegas attire. So, you know, that could just be about anything, especially with the uh, Super Bowl being on Sunday, you know, in Las Vegas. That's why we're going with the Lucky Strike Tournament. So, again, that's Saturday. Uh, If you'd like to sign up or register as a... um, Extra bowler, feel free to give us a call at 736-6951. I also want to touch on two things that are new with the Chamber. Really just announcing those things are the Future Ready Workforce Grant, where we received a grant through the Minnesota Chamber Foundation, DEED, and the Greater Twin Cities United Way, where we are able to uh, reimburse employers for student interns in high-demand careers. So get in touch with us at the Chamber if you want to learn more. It's a great new program. We already have uh, several of our employers and Chamber members signed up for that, but uh, we want to provide valuable experiences for students as they think about their career opportunities and their futures, and we are willing to pay their wages to make that happen. So uh, we are very fortunate to have received that. And uh, the last thing I'll mention is that we will be rolling out a pilot program for a leadership program that will start in March of this year. We've got a short uh, six-session pilot program that we're going to be testing out, and our goal will be to launch a full leadership program starting in the fall school year, when the school year kicks off. So stay tuned for that. Uh, We're just trying to find ways to uh, really add some positivity and clarity and uh, leadership skills throughout our community. So it's a great program. Again, watch our Facebook, the Chamber's website at fergusfalls.com. You'll be able to find more information on that. And as I've mentioned in the past, fergusfalls.com is a great resource for you when you're looking for community events, job postings, as well as our great business directory where you can find details of all the chamber members we're going to hear from today. And I'm happy to welcome to the show Scott O'Connick with Summit Carbon Solutions. And Scott, you're in Fergus Falls today for uh, some public meetings, right? So we should talk first about the project overall. If folks haven't maybe heard about the Summit Carbon Solutions project happening in Ottertail County. Yes, uh, thank you for thanks for having me, Lisa. So, I mean, um, the project what we're doing is actually connecting to Great Plains um, ethanol in Fergus Falls, and and actually sequester or capturing the the CO two that's currently being emitted into the atmosphere, um, and then we're actually um, shipping that via pipeline into North Dakota for um, permanent sequestration. Um, and today um, we're in yes in Fergus Falls at the Bigwood Event Center from one to four. And six to nine this afternoon, um, covering you know a big milestone in the permitting process with uh, for the Department of Commerce um, on behalf of the Public Utilities Commission, and that is the dra- its draft environmental impact um, statement has been released, and these meetings are to you know address you know public concern questions and to make sure that the the d- document covers all environmental safety impacts that uh, people people have questions about. 
Right. So that's happening today at the Bigwood Event Center. And, and you know, this is a really important project for our community, too. Green Plains Ethanol has been here for many years. Um, it's been a boost to our local economy. This will give that that economy another boost. Let's talk a little bit about uh, that, how, what that boost will mean to our local farmers, because I'm sure many of them are listening. Yeah, so this project s- supports, you know, the corn growers in the area. You know, great Green Plains purchases all their corn locally, right? And this continues Green Plains into the future. We're all we're all getting pressure to have you know reduced um, CI scores, and this is this is a which first is the carbon em- car- car- carbon intensity score, carbon you know? intensity score. See, yep. So all those acronyms, <laughs> yeah. So and, and it's important because I mean there's federal regulations, state state you know um, regulations that are actually putting pressures on companies to you know reduce reduce that score. Projects like this gives them a real term. You know, pulling this this carbon from the atmosphere right now um, keeps them competitive in green fuel markets that are continuing to grow and change and expand throughout throughout the country, and and helps them set up for you know what a, what what their future you know opportunities are within within these markets. Fantastic. Well, again, we're we're happy to have you as part of the business community and a chamber member going on two years already with Summit Carbon Solutions, a great supporter of our of our local community and many of the the I think of like the summer fest that you s- sponsored over the summertime and many ways of being involved in the community. Again, today there are uh, uh, meetings available or or public comment sections. Uh, at the Bigwood Event Center from 1 to 4 today and from 6 to 9 tonight where folks can find out more about it. They can ask questions. And uh, the process is a long process, but it is moving in a positive direction for you guys, correct? It, it is. You know, like, like you know, this is a big milestone, the, this draft e- EIS um, being released. Um, you know, there's many steps to come. The final, the final EIS will be, you know, what comes of of today's today's meetings, um, and and uh, from there, there's there's a few more steps, but yes, it's progression is happen happening nicely. Great. Well, thanks, Scott, for joining us and sharing some information with our local listeners today. And um, speaking of, you know, it's it's our business community and it's many organizations that make Fergus Falls a great place to live. A place great place to call home and a great place to do business. Uh, Aaron Tisber is joining me now with Health Resources Center, and we've got a big day coming up tomorrow for for your organization as well as several in the community. Let's talk a little bit about what Giving Hearts Day means to Health Resources Center. Yes, thank you, Lisa. Good to be here. Uh, for Giving Hearts Day, we're focusing on um, with health resources services, building healthier and stronger family units within our community. And how we do that is with parenting and pregnancy resources, um, just helping to moms and dads, just making um, their family units stronger and, and uh, better. So it's so important in our community. And honestly, you know, until you've been a parent, you don't really know how to be a parent. Like, you think that there's a lot of books right. as owner's manuals and everybody in here in the Not room is laughing the right now and yes. shaking their head like, yeah, you don't have any idea what you're getting yeah. into. We need and all what the help a, we can get, right? You know, exactly. it takes a village, as they say. So we just want to be you one are the part village. of that. Yeah, one, <laughs> one part of that to come alongside moms and dads. So um, we're excited. Giving Hearts Day tomorrow, we have matching funds. So when um, people donate... Um, then we can match those funds up to $15,000 tomorrow. So we're very excited. And part of those, because we do Giving Hearts Day, we can offer all our services for free at no cost to our clients. So um, this is one of our biggest fundraisers of the year. So we're we're very excited. It's going to be a fun day. So we hope that uh, yeah. Health Resources Center is one of the organizations that folks choose yes, to give for Giving Hearts Day. Many great Yes, many great uh, charities here in Fergus Falls. We have a website, um, org, and you can um, check that out, too. And they have all of our, I think there's eight of us, yeah. nine of us. There's quite um, a few local organizations that will benefit from this, so it's amazing. Yes, yes. Great. Fantastic. Well, thanks, Aaron, for joining us on the show. Dave, we're going to take a little break, and when we come back, we're going to be visiting with Brad Hoganson from Hillcrest Academy and Brian Billings with Gate City Bank. My name is Luke Johnston. I'm a juvenile probation officer in Ottertail County here in the Ottertail County Probation Department. It means that we supervise uh, juvenile offenders that are placed on supervised probation by the court. So we supervise uh, petty offenders, uh, delinquent offenders, all the way, all ranges of uh, offense levels, petty misdemeanors, all the way up through the felony level. 
think the overall goal here in, uh, with Ottertail County Probation is really reducing recidivism, so making sure that our clients are um, not re-offending, not re-entering the juvenile justice system, um, hopefully trying to keep them from coming into the adult system. I got into probation kind of by accident. I went to school for social work and my focus was on school social work and my advisor really pushed me to try something different. I didn't really know anything about it, just kind of went out of my way and tried something different. I really enjoyed working with the, like the high risk population. I enjoyed being able to be in the office, in the courtroom, at the schools, in the community. Kind of got to be all over the place and kind of involved in a lot of different things. I got a phone call the other day from a client that had been struggling with family relationships, dropped out of school, was kind of bouncing back and forth between houses, and he made a decision that, that he needed to move away from his environment. He, he picked up as an 18-year-old and relocated to a different city. I was able to kind of put him in touch with an employment company. They helped him out to get a job. Uh, he got an apartment. I talked to him a week after he had moved there, and he said, this is the best week of my life. And I think there's... There's a lot of stories like that. That's kind of the beauty of it, is that you get those stories all the time. I think it's really important if you're gonna get into this field or you have an interest in being a probation officer that you really have to have the right mindset. Uh, having a, a real heavy law enforcement mindset, that we've learned that incarcerating people does not change behavior. Uh, in order to change behavior, we really have to work with the individuals to, to think about decisions um, to think about their decision process, to, to make a change and to break kind of the cycle. Um, but we can't incarcerate away um, problematic behavior. It doesn't work. Uh, we really, really have to be out there working with individuals on decision points, decision making. Where can we affect change? How can we help you to break that cycle? So in order to qualify for a job in the probation field, there are some requirements that the Department of Corrections sets out and they require a bachelor's degree in criminal justice, corrections, um, social work, law enforcement, those types of fields. Um, they also require a 440 hour internship. Those don't have to be done through the Department of Corrections. 440 hour internship can be done in a probation department at a county level, at a state level, it could even be done at a federal level. A lot of times employers will also accept similar backgrounds or experiences too. So if you've worked in a juvenile correctional facility or maybe if you've worked at a jail, maybe if you've done case management for a mental health provider, those types of things can also count towards that 440 hour internship experience. My experience at Ottertail County so far is, has been fantastic. Since I've been employed here, I've had the opportunity to attend a lot of professional trainings. Our department really takes pride in, in engaging the, the employees in the process of change and, and really um, getting input on, on what do we need to do at kind of that micro, macro, and, and meso level um, to kind of impact change in the community. It's not just one single approach. It's, it's highlighting um, the strengths and talents of all the individuals that we have, bringing all those things together and kind of collaborating as, as a unit, as an organization, and as a county to, to really um, make change, not just in Fergus Falls, but in Ottertail County and all the communities that we serve. So I grew up in Fergus Falls, graduated from Fergus Falls High School in 2000. After I graduated, I moved to Duluth, went to school in the Duluth area for a couple of years, finished my bachelor's degree in social work at Minnesota State University in Mankato. I have been in Mankato for the last 15 years and just kind of on a whim decided uh, it was time to move back home and move the family back here. We thought a lot and talked a lot about how great it was to grow up in Fergus Falls and in Ottertail County. We came back home last summer and visited and just had a blast and, and kind of being back in town, you remember and see all these things that, that trigger other memories about what it was like growing up here. And that was really kind of the, the moment for me when it was like, all right, it's time to go back home. News Talk 1250 KPRF, and we're back with Chamber on the Air with Lisa Workman.
Hey, Dave, you know, we want to just keep talking here off air because we've been making some great connections. But, you know, we, that information is all great for other folks to hear, too, which is one of the, my favorite parts about the job is really making connections between our organizations, um, establishing some long-term relationships. And, you know, we just heard from Aaron Tisver from Health Resources talking about Giving Hearts Day. Next on the show is Brian Billings with Gate City Bank. And, Brian, you guys have been a great supporter of Giving Hearts Day over the years, haven't you, through the bank? Yeah, yeah, we have. It's been a lot of fun for us, actually. We um, a- Annually, we run a big promotion where we try to uh, get enough votes to have local established Giving Hearts uh, Charities to yeah. for us to donate uh, fifty thousand dollars to a local charity, so which we, is fantastic. Yeah. I love seeing the signs out as you drive by Gate City Bank. Great reminder about Giving Hearts Day, and you know it is again. It's that commitment that our business community makes to give back to our community. So when folks do business locally, when they get a loan from their local Gate City Bank, from the, when they do business with our local businesses, that money just goes back to our community in in ways that are so, I mean, uh, not even imaginable. Exactly. Life-changing. And so, you know what? When you go out and you buy your next boat, because it's almost boating season, I've seen open water, <laughs> right? and you go to Gate City Bank, know that you're helping many organizations in our community, so you can feel good about it. And Brian, I bet you've got some... Uh, Great reasons for folks to come out and spend some money. You know, you think it'd slow down. It really, it really has not slowed down at all. Um, I mean, we're running very various promotions right now. For example, we have a, a no payment for up to 120 days for uh, ice houses, boats, RVs. You wouldn't expect that uh, you'd need an ice house with this weather, but they're great for camping, <laughs> though. Great, too. yeah, camping. <laughs> but uh, yeah, RVs and boats. You know, for those purchases, where we are. Um, giving that promotion up to April 30th. So if we get an application in at that time, you qualify for that prom- promotion. Which is fantastic. You'd basically not have to make any payments on your new boat or new camper until the end of the camping season. Or right. who knows, maybe that'll go right into December again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Which is a great way, you know what, again, it stimulates the economy. So, you know what, go out and Go out and check out these all these fun toys and know that you're contributing to the economy for that, too. Right, correct. Yeah, other promotions we got going on. I mean, we have a home equity loan promotion where we have a closed-end loan, they're called, so not revolving, where, um, you know, we have uh, no closing costs, barring the potential need for an appraisal. Sure. So There's um, always stars. There's always, you know, talk to oh, your yeah. local banker at Gate City Bank Come to find to out me. the specific details. And, of course, Brian, too, you guys have worked with the City of Fergus Falls for that neighborhood fix-up. Now, winter time isn't always the perfect time for some fix-up, but you are really making a big impact in the community when it comes to uh, folks needing maybe some renovations or, you know, things like that. So let's talk a little bit about that partnership and what that fix-up fund is all about. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if uh, we happen not to qualify for our no-closing-cost promotion that ends on April 30th, we lean into our neighborhood impact program that Gate City Bank goes in tangent with the city of Fergus Falls. So what that means is Gate City Bank donates the gives the city a million dollars. And what that allows the city uh, the citizens of Fergus Falls to do as long as your home is in the municipal area of Fergus Falls, you're able to take part of this program. So, Which is fantastic. A lot of great programs and we invite you of course to come down to Gate City Bank, visit with Brian or other members of the great team there. Um, again, thank you for your support during Giving Hearts Day. It's been fabulous to see that outgoing and outpouring support. Just super thrilled and blessed to have you as a member of our community. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're we're blessed to be a part of it. Absolutely. Well, speaking of blessing, maybe this is really appropriate, right? (laughs) Uh, Brad Hoganson with Hillcrest Academy is joining us on the show next. And I I didn't really quite script it that way, but it does seem quite appropriate. (laughs) I don't know. I think there's some people listening who might go, huh, Hoganson and blessing, huh? Yeah, how did that work out, right? (laughs) Thanks for having us on. You bet. This this has been great. Well, we've invited you on, too, to talk about Giving Hearts Day because Hillcrest Academy is a participant in the local Giving Hearts Day promotion. Yeah, I want to say thank you to Gate City Bank. And, um, you know, it's it's great. I, I've always been a fan of uh, partnerships and relationships. And, uh, and this is just another one of those things in our community that shows the value of 
partnering together in uh, making our our community a better place. And so Hillcrest is part of that. We're um, also one of the uh, nonprofits that is uh, participating in Giving Hearts Day. Our our particular um, project is um, we've been renovating our we call it the old gym. Sure. Um, and now it's an auditorium uh, and. Um, one of the things we recognize is that as we're renovating that is it hasn't had uh, handicap accessibility. Those so are big, big things to change. Too. Yes, and it's an important thing. And so we want to take advantage of uh, this opportunity uh, for people to partner with us and uh, help us raise some funds to make our auditorium uh, handicap accessible. Much more accessible. And I think two of the generations of folks mm-hmm. who've been involved with Hillcrest Academy, you know, you said nonprofit, but I always think of Hillcrest Academy as kind of a, a, a local economic driver because of all of the yeah. The people and the families that come into Fergus Falls, that make Fergus Falls their home right. because of the education through Hillcrest Academy. And that's been going on and on. And then there are families who then move back to Fergus Falls after sure. graduation and start businesses. Yeah. I mean, we, Brian is one of those folks who move back, you know, move away and then move yep. back. Me so, too. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I, I came to Hillcrest when I was in high school, moved away, moved back, moved away, moved back. So I'm back again. And you're always welcome back home in the Fergus Falls area. It always so. feels like home, for you know, sure. You know, Brad, we should touch on, too, you know, with Giving Hearts Day um, and Hillcrest being a partner in that. Mm. You know, I would imagine there are some folks that weren't aware. They know that Hillcrest of, as a high school. Sure. But they may not be aware of the extension of that education. Yeah. Hear about... Uh, Three, four years ago, uh, we merged together with Morning Sun Christian School, and uh, we're now one school, Hillcrest Lutheran Academy, preschool through uh, grade 12, and we have some uh, open houses. We have open enrollment right now. Uh, We have an open house for our uh, preschool, uh, pre-K, and kindergarten, um, and that's on February 26th uh, from 5 to 7. These dates will be on the chamber uh, calendar. On the calendar, of course. Yeah. And then we have a visit Hillcrest weekend for grades uh, 7 through 12 coming up February 29th through March uh, March 2nd. So a great chance for folks in the region yeah, come and to visit. come and love visit. To show. As I was walking out the doors today, we have a family from Brazil uh, visiting. Uh, actually, I ran into them in the Newark airport. How crazy is that? Oh, my gosh. Small through, world. <laughs> yeah, we came through the TSA together, and they're, they're at Hillcrest now um, walking through the school and visiting with students and teachers and it's oh, great. I hope they enjoy the community. Yeah, they're they're wondering why there's no snow. Yeah, they, they were really excited about snow. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of us who have been wondering about the snow thing. And yeah. you know what, folks, it is still February. So <laughs> don't hold your breath yeah. and maybe don't put your uh, boat in the water quite yet. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So and that is the other thing, too, is that you not only bring folks from around the U.S., but you've got families and, and students that are here from... Many different countries. Yeah, I think this year we have students from nine different countries, uh, nine or ten different states around the United States, and it's uh, come together in Fergus Falls. Absolutely. And as a Fergus Falls community, we want to say thank you and oh, welcome man. to those families and those students, uh, really just bringing a whole new uh, level of interest and culture right into Fergus Falls. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's and great. We are right in central United States, so... You know, perfect place for folks to land, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's wonderful, I and mean, people love once when they get here. They they love the community. They feel welcomed in the community. Local businesses, uh, families in our community. It's a it's a wonderful community, Fergus Falls. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, it takes so many of us to make Fergus Falls a great community. Mm-hmm. Nonprofits, schools, churches, banks, and so many of our businesses that make Fergus Falls a great place to call home. Uh, Brad, thank you for joining us yeah, on the thank show you today. For me. You can check out uh, the chamber's website at Fergus Falls. Dot com to find out details about uh, the open houses at Hillcrest, as well as information on job postings and hot deals, our great business directory where you can find uh, out more about many of the organizations and businesses in our community. It's a great searchable directory if you want to find out more about things going on at Gate City Bank or learn about Summit Carbon Solutions or Health Resources Center 
or the other 300 and some <laughs> members. I won't list them all by name, but check out our website at fergusfalls.com. And again, I do want to uh, give a shout out to Northern Airlines and all the businesses who are sponsoring the 60 teams at the Battle of the Businesses Bowling Tournament this Saturday, February 10th. Come on out and cheer them on. And also get in touch with us at the Chamber uh, to find out more details about the Future Ready Workforce Grant, where the Chamber will be able to provide wage reimbursement for your student interns uh, to provide them with meaningful experiences in high-demand, high-wage career opportunities. And it was so exciting to, to roll out that information, and we've already got, I believe, four of our local businesses signed up and about a dozen students who are uh, getting paid internships and, again, funded through the Chamber. So, Get in touch with me on that, and I also want to let you know about our leadership program. The pilot program will be rolling out this spring with the full program in the fall. If you would like to find out more about those, get in touch with me at the Chamber at 218-736-6951. Again, check out our events calendar. You'll learn more. You can find out more about our virtual Chamber Cafe coming up March 14th. Also on March 11th, we'll have a speed networking session with high school students at the Fergus Falls High School. So all kinds of great things going on in and around our community. Thank you all so much for being a part of it. And uh, we will catch you again next month for Chamber on the Air. Thanks, Lisa. Lisa Workman with Fergus Falls Area Chamber of Commerce with the Chamber on the Air. Coming up at 11 o'clock, Derek City, and I'll take you through the news.